original Xbox was a revolutionary console. It might not have been the most powerful, but its PC-like architecture and DirectX technology allowed it to have the best graphics of its generation. Not only did the original Xbox have impressive visuals, but they were able to sell a surprising amount of units, especially considering what they were up against. Microsoft did this by creating one of the best consoles of all time. So let's take a look back at the Xbox original and see how Microsoft created something so great. It all started in 1998 with the Sega Dreamcast. Microsoft announced that the Sega Dreamcast will be running a modified version of Windows CE, which previously only saw use in mini laptops and pocket PCs. This modified version of Windows CE was also supposed to include their DirectX technology, which previously was a PC-only gaming API. So Microsoft was open to bringing DirectX to a console that they didn't even develop. That's weird. Not only did they do that, but they designed a console interface in 1998 that had several web features. This was years before Xbox Live, or really any concept of multiplayer online, especially on a console. The Dreamcast even had an email client in a web browser. Keep in mind, this is on a console that came out in 1998, which was when the internet was still new. Microsoft planned to bring so much innovation to the Dreamcast that it almost feels like they could time travel. Notice how I said planned. They planned to bring innovation to the Dreamcast. Microsoft wasn't able to realize their plans for the Dreamcast due to complications with the business relationship. Instead of loading DirectX into the console's OS like originally planned, Sega decided to let publishers put whatever OS they wanted onto the game discs themselves. Game developers had two options, either develop for DirectX or develop for Sega's proprietary codebase. Soon enough, most developers went with Sega's codebase due to it being more familiar and well-supported. Although that didn't keep everyone away from using DirectX, some developers even had good results with a fairly new API. Today, for the first time, we're unveiling the Xbox. Uh, this is the product that will be out uh, later this year, uh, and there's an amazing amount going on. Uh, working with uh, partners who help build the hardware, working with the software developers, working with the retailers, the program around this thing is really quite phenomenal. The Xbox was released on November 15th, 2001 with some truly memorable launch titles. Not that one. Microsoft knew this launch day was important, so they spent most of their time hyping up the graphical capability of the original Xbox. The hype wasn't for nothing either. The original Xbox was basically a small gaming desktop. At the core of the Xbox was an Intel Pentium 3 processor, which at the time was one of the most popular desktop processors for video editors and enthusiasts. Assisting the powerful Pentium 3 was a custom Xbox graphics card from Nvidia that was somewhat similar to a GeForce 3. 
Accompanying the CPU and GPU are 64 megabytes of DDR RAM, which was quite overkill for the time. Providing a place for you to save your games and music was an internal 8GB 5400 RPM hard drive, which was actually quite forward thinking for the time. Every other console in its generation used removable cards for save data. Removable cards can get lost, using an internal hard drive fixes that. If the original Xbox didn't have a hard drive, I likely wouldn't have my save files from 2004 still. With such robust hardware, it was impressive that they were still able to sell this console for $299. For comparison, the PlayStation 2 also sold for $299 and had half the processing power. This is the reason the Xbox original could run games like Half-Life 2, which never made it to the PS2 due to hardware limitations. Not only did Half-Life 2 make it to the Xbox original, but it looked stunning while doing so. The Xbox original had so much hardware potential and was so close to being a desktop computer that it became the modding console of choice for many people. With just a few software tweaks, the Xbox original could even run Windows due to the well-known nature of the Pentium 3 processor. With the addition of modded chips, you could also pirate Xbox games, which was a big issue for Microsoft and likely one of the reasons the Xbox 360 went with a non-PC architecture. Emulation wasn't the only thing noteworthy about the Xbox either. Xbox Live single-handedly established a standard for online gaming that we still hold today. Overall, the Xbox original was an innovative console that outpaced the competition in many ways beyond specs, and they were able to sell an impressive amount of units for how new the company was to console major.